Welcome to the African Album Review Podcast, where we review Africa's best and latest music projects. Africa. Murise. My name is M. Jomoto, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a rundown of Born in the Wild by Thames. The clock starts now. The latest African album review is... Born in the Wild by Thames has to be one of the most anticipated albums by an African artist in a very, very long time. And there's good reason. I mean, Thames is a Grammy winner and a very respected musician, not only on the continent, but internationally. This has seen us secure some upper echelon collabos with the cream de la cream of the music industry. This album is like stepping into a pocket of 90s R&B with some pop influences and then that African twist sprinkled on top there. That keeps it interesting in certain phases as you're listening. There's no way to not say the quiet part loud, which is that there are some parts of this record that have a very American feeling about them. This even extends to how Thames sings on some of the songs, almost like intentionally wanting to have as much crossover appeal on the record as possible. Because of that, it can feel like two projects that are made into one to give it more heft. In that regard, even Thames herself has acknowledged that her music isn't really Afrobeats, even though she does have some Afrobeat songs here and there, and we gotta find a name for it. Whether it's Afro, R&B, or whatever it is, it's different. Because of that, I do suspect that this is part of the inspiration to the album title, which is Born in the Wild, because her perception of music and what's good music has never been whatever is on and popping at the time and everybody is just rushing to do the same version of, you know, the hit song that everybody's listening to. And she's had many rejections because of it, something that she stated herself. In the end, Born in the Wild has a more mature appeal, far more than the vibe check. There's some vibe songs for sure, but predominantly, I felt that there was more emphasis on a deeper connection to who Thames is than trying to manufacture his per se, and then the inspiration of her mom within that, obviously having a bit of a skit there and everything. Wow, it's it, it really takes you uh, back and you look at it and realize that, yo, Thames goes through a lot of human things that 20 something people go through as well, even though she's like this huge star and has had everything happening to her uh, in such a short space of time. That makes Born Wild quite authentic to many listeners out there. Having said that, the stats tell us that her music still produces hits. I mean, look at Love Me JJ is sitting at uh, 46 million streams on Spotify, 6 million views on YouTube, Me and You is on 105 million streams on Spotify, and 35 million views on YouTube. That shows that she can dig deep in her bag to give her audience music with wider appeal and replay value, at the same time still being able to take it back to, you know, something that's more closer to home for her. You could tell that she had more help in the writing department as some of Born in the Wild did feel less timsy, for lack of a better word, but that comes with growth and conquering international markets such as the US. You will have to play the game sooner or later. I loved the R&B vibe on Burning which reminded me of TQ's hit song West Side from back in the day. And talking about back in the day, the song Wickedest starts with a sample of one of the greatest African songs ever made, Premier Gao. Ooh, loved that. I rate Born in the Wild by Thames a 7.6 out of 10. By the way, before I dip, my website is now up and running. mjwemoto.com M-J-W-E-M-O-T-O dot com Just check it out check it out otherwise that's it for me my name is mj omoto son of zimbabwe signing out peace this podcast is hosted by mj 